Okay, so um, I'm Stuart Lewis, this is Tom Higgins, we're from the Universities of Edinburgh and Manchester. I want to talk to you today about the Data Vault, uh, which is a project we've been undertaking over the past year or so. Um, it's a just sponsored project in the area of research data management. We have our slides on automatic timing, so sometimes I'll just waffle and fill in gaps like this, um, and other times it'll go on. Or actually, Adobe Reader hasn't updated or has updated successfully to obtain it. Let's go back to PowerPoint. Right then. So we all have research data management services in our universities. Hopefully now they're sort of split up typically around this type of setup. This is how we describe ours at Edinburgh, research data management support advice and training, um, data management planning, what you do before your research, active data infrastructure while you're undertaking your research, and data stewardship afterwards. Now, we came up with this sort of concept of the data vault probably about two or three years ago now, really in terms of, sort of trying to answer the question, well, what do you do with your data that maybe you can't share? Um, the data that you have to keep for one reason or another, um, you need to put it somewhere, you need to keep it safe, you need to be able to retain it, you need to be able to review it at the end so that you can use very important delete it, so this is the notion of the data vault. Very similar in a sense to a bank data vault, um, you have your own little space in it, you register that space, that drawer with the bank manager, you give them your name and address, call that metadata, um, and then that's your space for putting your data and it's kept safe. The other analogy you could also use is sort of deep freeze, um, you, put your, you, you put your data into that and then when you find it, you sort of need to use it again in a couple of time, somebody else requests to use your data, um, then you can get it out, it's exactly the same as it was when you put it in. Um, or alternatively, um, you can delete it at the end if you further need it. The system um, sort of sits in between um, where your data currently lives, whether that's your active storage or maybe something like laboratory equipment, um, and then your archival storage as well, um, your system where you actually store that data. So the data vault isn't, we should say, sort of a storage system in its own right. It's simply a sort of um, ingest and description tool um, for research data. Um, it's provided by a RESTful API, so you can have multiple interfaces to it, but it does come with a default web interface, which I'll show you in a second. So the sort of use cases it can be used for, um, golden copy research data, maybe you've just collected it, you don't want anyone to accidentally delete it or mess it up, so you might stick the copy in the vault. Um, your final data that can't be shared, um, so you might have a part that you publish um, in your data repository, but you can put everything else in here, um, and several other use cases. So um, this is sort of the information architecture, you have your data vault, um, it has one or more users, each user can have one or more vaults, um, so we'd say you know, a vault, you probably set up a different vault for a different project that you have. Each vault can then be made up of a number of different deposits, um, they're stored in a packet format, which is then stored um, in your archive of storage. This is just about as techy as we get with slides, but basically it's designed to scale. So we have um, a message queue in there, so you have a number of workers that undertake the work that to be taken, so things get queued up, um, and we can scale out the numbers of workers if we need them. Very, very quickly, um, just to try quite an innovative way of funding these projects. We're a number of projects where they, we basically had to go up. Hopefully you all know the Dragon's Den program, TV program. We have, essentially did it like that. We had to go in front of um, a number of judges, pitch our ideas, ask for a set of money, um, and then we either get the money or not. So rather than us writing a typical grant proposal, um, it was face-to-face sort of -face like this. We, we, we had to do that three times, we got three sets of money, and then we've been working on the number through those phases, a number of different um, areas, whether it was the core product in the middle, integrations, outside, um, and so on. But we'll give you a very quick run through um, of the system now and how it works. Okay, so um, the code is available on GitHub, and we also have a live demo on the web, but we're just going to show you some screenshots here to get, give you a flavour for what this actually looks like for a researcher who's depositing their data. So after they log in with their institutional credentials, they get a welcome page. They can choose to create a vault. Uh, this is the vault creation. So the vault is really where we ask some minimal metadata questions. We're asking things like, um, uh, does this relate to an existing external metadata record in your CRIS system or something like that? Uh, we want to know what is the retention policy for this data, how long should we be keeping it for, and we want to know what the group is, which establishes a chain of custody. Um, so once they've created the vault, uh, we can do things like tell them um, when the review date will be based on the potential policy that they chose. And this year, it's going to be 10 years in the future. Um, and then they can move on to actually deposit their data into the vault. Um, they can do multiple deposits into a single vault. 
Um, so what we do then is we actually go and connect to the user storage um, in the background. They don't have to do uh, browser upload. We're actually going to connect straight to their storage. They can browse through all their directories, uh, say on their institutional file store, and choose what they want to deposit with a, a simple deposit note. Um, we show them the progress of the deposit. As I said, this is happening asynchronously in the background with some workers, so they don't have to stick around, they don't have to keep the browser open, they can close it and come out later if it's a very large amount of data that's being transferred. Um, and at the end of this, we'll also send them a notification email to let them know that their deposit is complete. Um, so here's what it looks like when you've completed your deposit. Um, so we, we just sort of confirm that your deposit has indeed completed successfully. Um, there's an audit trail behind the scenes, so events like when the deposit was completed and by who um, will be logged in the audit table. <laughs> okay, uh, we also do a little bit of um, format identification um, using the Apache Tika library. So we can sort of uh, make some guesses about what kinds of files go into the data vault. Um, you can also see here we have the check and the Bagot library, so the user can validate that what they put in the vault has actually gone in. Um, so it's quite rare that users might want to be able to restore their data from the vault as well. Uh, we expect more people depositing than restoring, um, because this is kind of an offline dark archive kind of setup. Uh, but if they did want to restore, it's, it's the inverse of the deposit process. They can just select from their active storage, and we copy the data back um, into their active storage directory that they've chosen from the archive. Um, so that will complete as well. Um, and finally, we have some administration features. I can't show you too many of them. Um, in this case, there's a dashboard, which is just showing you how much data is in the vault, um, how many users, uh, what's the activity in the vault and the health. And this is also the way you get the, um, the, uh, uh, the logging um, stuff as well. Yep, if you happen to want to learn more and you are around, in or around London on the 29th of June, we have an implementation workshop where we're sort of inviting people to come along and actually sort of think through what it um, takes to install and implement. And then, yeah, that's us. Like any good uh, bit of software, we have to get this. So, if you like to get a laptop, you're very welcome to have one.